heirloom sewing is not complete without the famous pin stitch. Today, Marie Stevens will share lots of ideas on pin stitching techniques. If you have never tried the pin stitch, your day has arrived. Try it, experiment with your machine, and start creating your own stitch library that you will truly enjoy. Beverly Sheldrick from New Zealand has beautiful silk ribbon stitches to share, carefully placed on a gorgeous christening ensemble. Charlotte Gallagher will share with us a wonderful sewing accessory to add to your collection. It's time to sew, and I'm so very happy that you are here. This is the most beautiful christening dress. You are going to just love it. We'll start at the top here. The beautiful decorative stitches with the flip-flop bow right on top of the decorative stitches. I have to pull this little sleeve down for you to see with the antique machine embroidery and the little bias uh, sleeve band with the ribbons. But come on down and look at the front of this dress. Absolutely fabulous. The bow, the flip-flop bow coming down the dress with flip-flops. Beautiful lace, beautiful decorative stitches. And once again, the antique embroideries in the middle and the words on the bottom, Megan Marie, baptized July 2006. Absolutely spectacular christening dress. Now the bodice is what we're going to talk about right now. First of all, you have to trace off the bodice pattern on fabric before you do your stitching. Do not cut your bodice out. Then you come in and do your decorative stitching. And of course, in the christening dress, we do white on white. Do your decorative stitching. Then Marie shaped her bow separately from the dress, then spray starched and pressed, and then transferred her bow over to the beautiful bodice that she had uh, machine stitched. And at that point, after you do your machine stitching, then you cut it out. Marie has an incredible technique for an extra stable lace uh, attachment. Zigzag down both sides of the lace, then come to the back, slice the fabric open, fold one half back, Fold the other half back and then come back and do your uh, wing needle pin stitch as your final attachment on the lace. I'm so pleased to have as my guest today, Marie Stevens. Marie is an educational consultant for Genomi. Marie, welcome to the show. Thank you, Martha. It's wonderful to be here. And thank you for making that beautiful Christine dress for our viewers it to enjoy. It was my pleasure. Thank you, Marie. Uh -huh. I'd like to show you just the few steps that I took to make the bodice. I like to trace the bodice first on a piece of fabric so that when I'm doing my stitching, if, it, if the stitches pull the fabric in just a little bit, I can cut the bodice out later. My stitches are sewn on the bodice in pink so that you can see them. As you can see, I start a little before the neck, a little below the seam down here. So when I cut it out, all the stitches are even. Little lace bow, I shape, I press, lift it up, and place it on the bodice before I can sew it. Pin it on the bodice, zigzag all around, and pin stitch it all around. For my pin stitching, I take the fabric, I zigzag both sides, I then come round to the back. And with children's clothing, I, instead of cutting the back part away, I like to slip, slit it down the center and fold both sides back. I then trim the sides. I've trimmed one side here, pin stitch them. This way it gives extra stability to children's clothing. I have the machine set up for a pin stitch. And I'm going to sew it for you. That would be after you cut the lace and fold after it back, I cut, isn't it, Marie? After I cut the lace on this one. Okay. I've cut the lace, I've folded it back and trimmed it on this side. Okay. And now I'm ready to stitch it. And are you using a wing needle? I am using a wing needle, a 100 wing needle. I'm okay. using the F foot on the machine. This is the applique foot so I can see exactly where I'm going. Okay. 
And you know, the pin stitch, Marie, for those that do not know this stitch, it looks like a ladder with one half, one it part does. of the ladder falling off. It's a straight line with little fingers that go in and grab. Yes, ma'am. And so your straight line is where on this lace? It is on the outside. The, um, the straight line comes right over on the outside of the lace. The finger goes right across into the lace. I try to just keep it on the very edge of the lace because I don't want to use up some of this beautiful lace. I just keep it on the edge. This is a Parisian stitch, which means that the, uh, this, it is sewing three times on each side. And you know, Marie, I know some people use a large needle, such as a you know, yes. universal needle, like a yes. 110 or a 120 needle, yes. rather than the wing needle. They and do. I think yes. both are beautiful. They are. And yes. if you're so fortunate as to have a pin stitch on your sewing machine, it would yes. seem to me that you would want to try all yes, of them. Yes, I have. And I, I love your extra them. stable lace shaping technique too, or your extra you. stable lace thank attachment you. sheet. Thanks. Marie, thank you so much thank for this you, beautiful dress you've made in these techniques. Thank you. And now Marie has some sewing inspirations to share with you. Marie, I just love your samples, your inspirations. Tell us about this beautiful blouse. Thank you. Well, I, when we got the new machine, I just wanted to do some eyelets since these were built in. So I did my usual lace shaping and, and used the eyelets as, as far as I could on the front of the blouse. I also did the lace on the sewing machine. Um, I made 28 motifs of this lace to go around the bottom and the, and the sleeves. And also go around the sleeves. Uh -huh. That is absolutely beautiful Thank for you. blouse. Thank you. And you know what? You know how I love uh, Crazy Patch. Uh -huh. And look what you've done with the laces and the decorative stitches and the pieces and the machine embroidery on this beautiful silk dupioni. Oh, Marie, that's so pretty. Table runners happen to be one of my favorite things to do in the whole world in sewing. Tell us about this one. This one is in the normal sew, and these are all normal sewing stitches that you were put, I put together on my edit screen and designed the, um, the layouts for them. Absolutely. With sewing stitches. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, Marie, they just get prettier and prettier. Look at this beautiful table runner. Now, this was done in the big hoop, I This suppose. was done in the big hoop. It was not... Yes. Hoop several times. No, well, I this, guess it was hooped two times. This was two, two times. It was done in the big hoop. And then around the edge, I just put decorative stitching here and around the edge. And Marie, you have such elegant taste with your colors. Oh, I just love Well, I white. just love gold and white. So. Oh, well, and I, well, I don't blame <laughs> Obviously. you. Obviously. And look at this. Now, is this a purchase table that, runner? This is a, a, what they call a blank. Okay, a blank. And, okay. Absolutely. And then this is again hooped twice in the big hoop with a decorative stitch around it. So once you get very the blank, quick and very uh, easy. just enjoy your embroidery uh -huh. machine and yes. have fun with yes. absolutely no sewing. Yes. Well, Marie, when we hung up this quilt, I thought, oh, me, look how beautiful it is. And I was especially interested in this uh, uh, square right here. Could uh -huh. you tell me what the cross hatching is? Yes, the cross hatching is the triple stretch stitch. It's available on, I would think, just about every sewing machine. I like to use it when I'm doing cross hatching because it sort of stands up a little bit. It almost looks like a quilting stitch. It does. Maybe a little like a hand embroidery Yes, stitch. it does. It's a little heavier. And then in each center, I did a French knot. And by machine, by of course. machine. Yes. And this beautiful circle of machine lace, and of course your monogram in the middle. And last but not least, <laughs> I saved the little girl dress. Oh, this is so beautiful. And that's where I got the name that's of the magazine. So, I know. It is so <laughs> beautiful. Look at this collar with the uh, gorgeous basket. Was this for a, fly, a wedding? Was, yes. A flower girl? Yes. And the basket yes. for the flower. Oh, yes. Marie, you're so wonderful. Let From me hold this up. Park. Silk Dupioni. And look at the basket for a little flower girl. I just can't think that anybody in the wedding would be more beautifully dressed than the flower girl and their Thank beautiful you. silk dupioni Thank dress. You. And Thank now you, Marie has a so quick, so easy project to share with you.
Marie, you make such beautiful things. And I absolutely fell in love with this little jar or vase cover mm -hmm. that is sewn in a circle and it covers this beautiful vase that mm -hmm. all of us have about 15 Probably stored away too. somewhere. Yes. yes, the little plain florist vase. Uh -huh. And yes. this beautiful cover goes right on there. And then the beads, you know, Marie, we were talking about what to call this. I know. Our grand, my grandmother used to have some of these that were the size to go over her, her vegetable, her, yes. her table. And yes. she put a cover to keep the flies off Absolutely. of the table in yes. the summertime. Uh -huh. yes. But anyway, hopefully we don't have any flies in the hopefully house Hopefully we don't. Keep no. the windows down, <laughs> don't we, with air conditioning. <laughs> yes. But that is just beautiful. Show us I how do. you do all the circular stuff. And the uh, this one here, um, it's it's not weighted with beads. It just has lace on the end. And I thought it looks like a nice little doily. But we do the circular stuff by putting the circular sewing attachment on our machine putting the center right in the middle of my design here, choosing a stitch, a decorative stitch, and just sewing as if you're going to sew a straight line. But with it being on the circular sewing attachment, it's going to sew in circles. That makes it so easy. It's so easy. I would suppose that if you didn't have one of those circular sewing attachments, you would simply draw your circles and attempt to keep it in the and exactly. but it would be very hard. Yes, it would be very hard. The, what are you what stitch are you using? I'm using the briar stitch. It's called patchwork on here. Uh, but it's called the briar or it's called a feather on some machines. Um, you can whatever you call it, but I, I think you can do any stitch on here. You could do twin needle. I have some twin needle on here to show you and uh, do any stitch you like, as many as you want to do. You can do the twin needle then, mm -hmm. the double needle pin double stitching. Double needle pin stitching is uh, right here. Using the circular attachment yes. too. You yes. know, Marie, as I was looking at that beautiful circular piece, it seemed to me that would be wonderful for um, for coasters and maybe even for, would it be, could you use a circular placemat? Yes, absolutely. Well, well this yes. is beautiful yes. and it would be wonderful for coasters as well as for our as well really as, sweet yes. little jar cover and yes. of course a doily. Yes. Marie, this is absolutely beautiful. Everything you've made, it's just been such a joy to have you here in my sewing room today. It's been a joy for me too. Martha. Thank you so Thank much you. for coming. And now we have sewing accessories for you. I'm so happy to have as my guest today, Charlotte Gallagher. Charlotte is Machine Embroidery Director of Martha Pulling Company. Charlotte, welcome to the show. Thank you, Martha. Now, Fun this be beautiful, beautiful uh, sewing organizer, mm -hmm. first of all, I have to show our viewers this wonderful pin cushion with the little pedals and with the um, little elastic piece that slips over the wrist. I think I'll just wear it right okay. this minute. That goes with this beautiful sewing organizer that I absolutely love. And we'll just hold it up here so our viewers can see how fabulous this is with the machine embroidery and all the pretty Lots elements. Of Lots of pockets. Now I'm going to hand you this little pin cushion so okay. everybody can see it a little bit better over there. Okay. In, in a previous uh, session we did the beginnings of the pin cushion with a circular attachment and to finish it and do the pedals and the strap that goes on it you will need a bias strip folded in half right sides together. Then you can either trace the scallops that are the petals are I used a paper template and I stitched right on the paper and that way I didn't have to do all the drawing so your fabric is really your okay it's underneath there uh-huh right? and then you shorten your stitch length just a little bit and that helps to perforate the paper and this piece has been stitched trimmed and clipped and then you turn it right side out and with a either a double stitch or your gathering foot you're going to gather up the length of petals. And this goes on the back of your circular pin cushion you have already created. And you'll have to fiddle with the petals just a little bit to get them like you want. Pin them on to this area of the pin cushion and then baste them onto there. Once that's done, we also created a back for the pin cushion with the circular attachment in the previous episode and you're going to pin that on and stitch it leaving an opening on two sides stitching by hand of course yes you have to do that then you will take a another bias strip stitch right sides together a quarter inch seam insert 3 8 inch elastic in it with a bodkin turn it right side out 
of course, and then adjust the elastic to fit your wrist. That will be inserted into the opening that you let on each side, opposite sides, and then you've got your finished pin cushion. Well, Charlotte, that looks so hard to do. It is not hard to do. No. It is absolutely beautiful and such a wonderful accessory to go along with this beautiful sewing organizer. It is. And now we have some hand embroidery for you. I'm so happy to have as my guest today, my dear friend and business colleague, Beverly Sheldrick from New Zealand. Beverly has taught all over the world and she has authored several books. And Beverly, welcome to the show. Thank you, Martha, for, for the invitation. It's always wonderful to be here with you. And I love this beautiful dress and thank you very much. The dress you've made for William Joseph, our new grandson. And tell us what stitch you're gonna to do today. Well, Martha, today I'm going to show the viewers how to make a carnation. Now, you can see that it's here. They're actually scattered throughout the gown. I've used them quite a lot, but it's a lovely little flower. It just takes a little bit of extra time to make, and they do look wonderful in, in seven millimeter also, but I've chosen to use four millimeter today because of the scale of the other embroidery. You will also see that they're here on the, the little booty. We've got several of them there, these creamy, fluffy little things here. Now, they're quite so easy to do, as long as you remember the rules. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, the first thing, viewers, that you really do need to ta take care of is this little football. You'll see I've drawn this little football here. Now, the mistake that so many people do is they draw it too big. You can see that this is barely, uh, I suppose, a, a quarter of an inch, certainly no more, even with a bigger one. Don't be tempted to try to be over generous with this uh, piece here. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is you will see that I've gone over with, I've done these little whipping stitches and I'm going to show the viewers how to do it. Um, I've gone across this top section here. Then when I get to the end, that pointed end there, I will secure it again. And then this time I'll come, I'll, the ribbon will be folded back this way and I will come back along here to this end. And you can see with this one here that this is what I've done here. And last but not least, I've taken the ribbon actually goes round in behind there. And then I've taken some green to make the cyclax to go there. And you'll, I'll show you how this is anchored there. And then, of course, it's that tortured feather stitch of mine <laughs> to give us those lovely nubbly stems that we know that carnations have. So here we go. You, here's my little football drawn in here. And I've chosen to show you this with these black stitches so that you can see. Now, viewers, it's a whipping stitch. Don't be tempted to try and do a gathering stitch. It doesn't work. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do these five little stitches along here like this. Um, you'll see there's just five. Can you see how the, I'm just taking the little edge there like that, just, just catching it like this. And then I'm going to just pull them up like this so that those gathers go right back to where my needle came up in the first place. We'll just get that out of the way. And I will go through to the back like that. Now, because I don't want a particularly large one, I'm just going to come up in the middle here and I will do another five of those little running stitches. Come along. You will see with this one here, I have now gone right to the end. I've taken an extra stitch there just for security. I've now folded this back here like this. And you can see that I have already started to put these 
little whipping stitches uh, just on the edge of it there. That will then be gathered up like that. I'll secure it, go through to the back. I'll come up again here. So we've got three across the back and then two of these little bundles across the front there like that. Now you will see that I've got some green here. I'm going to take that up there like that. And I'm going to take this green, I've got two strands of green embroidery floss there. I'll take that through there like that. I will bring this down. I'm just going to take it just below there like that. And then I will bring this up underneath here just in just inside like that and then it will be these two elongated or tortured feather stitch like this and it really is very very simple you wouldn't normally do it quite as big as that but this is a well endowed stem <laughs> uh, so just Putting that to one side, we've just got a little moment longer, so what I would like to do is just go back over this little section here with you, because I find that what happens is so often people say, well, why can't I just do a little gathering stitch? It's going to create the same effect. But viewers, it doesn't. You really do need to have those whipping stitches that, as I said, come just like that. It then makes it so easy to then just draw them up like that. And it is very, very secure. If I had a gathering stitch, it just doesn't have the stability that doing it like that. And of course, when you get to the point where You've got the end, then I'm just going to take that round and put that in there, in the back, like that. And there it is. Beverly, thank you so very much for sharing with us this beautiful carnation stitch and, and for always being here on Martha's Sewing Room. Martha, it's always a pleasure <laughs> to be with you. Thank you. Thank and you. now I have a beautiful older girl's dress to share with you from my vintage collection. As I travel to flea markets and antique stores literally around the world, I'm constantly looking for new pieces to share with you here on the sewing room and to develop and to uh, do machine embroideries with. And a lot of times my pieces kind of have little holes in them and are not really perfect, but that's okay to me because I know that you'll love to see the design and the embroidery. This little dress is a magnificent piece. It has beautiful, beautiful embroidery. These are Swiss embroideries and it has pin tucks. Well, really they aren't pin tucks, they're folded tucks. But I do want to show you that there are some little holes and this one has a real interesting patch. One of the things I love to do with these clothes is to see how they have been mended. And this little one was mended by hand, but it really wasn't a very good job because it kind of fell apart. And I want to show you on the sleeve here too, there's another little hole that nothing was done about mending that. And probably I'm not going to mend it, although I could um, hand whip that. And, or even put a little bit of organdy behind it, a little bit of netting. This, this is a pigeon-breasted dress, um, very typical of around 1900 to 1910, even a little bit before. Look at the beautiful skirt. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pin tucks, a beautiful Swiss insertion, and a beautiful piece of Swiss edging. And it also has a piece right at the top that is beading or ribbon slot, also from Switzerland, that ribbons would have been run through. Let me turn it over to the back and show you how beautiful the back of this dress is. Once again, I told you that this place, this dress has some little rotted places, but it was okay with me because I wanted to buy it for you, for you to be able to see the design of the dress and the beautiful embroideries, which we love to create by hand and by machine. Thank you so much for joining me in my sewing room today. I would really like to invite you to come back next time. Thank you.